Good to see everyone. You came a little earlier today. The last few weeks, people have been coming closer to the hour. So I got a little anxious that we were going to have to turn people away because it would overflow fast, but we did okay with the numbers. I know a few of you are back for the first time, so welcome uh, to our Savior. We're almost through the season of Epiphany. Next Sunday will be our last Sunday of Epiphany where we celebrate the transfiguration of our Lord. And then, of course, we move into the Lenten season on February 17th with the Ash Wednesday service. We have two of those at 12 and 7. So uh, it's just good to see all of you. Uh, this last year has been something else without question. And uh, it's part of one of the purposes of the body of Christ that we support each other. So even if it's just this 50 minutes or so on Sunday morning, it's very valuable for us. Uh, our Epiphany song today is Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, and it'll be on the overhead.
we pray together. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. from the foundations of the earth. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretch out of the heavens like a curtain and spread them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal? says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak of, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, he does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 147 responsibly. Praise the Lord. How good is it to sing praises to our God? For he is gracious, and the song of praise is fitting. The Lord brings up the Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts in Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. <clears throat> Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food, and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Praise the Lord. We rise to sing the gospel acclamation. <laughs>
the same mark, the first chapter. As soon as Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. And Simon's mother-in-law was, now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. May be seated. Grace and peace to each of you from Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Especially grace and peace to you three car loads out in the parking lot this morning. It was nice in a few minutes before the parish to go out and greet them today. Sometimes I forget about that. As we gather in here, there's always been at least two cars, usually couples in their cars, and there were three this morning at 5 till 10. So we're glad that you are here and you are worshiping with us this morning. We have lived with the pandemic at least since March 15th of last year. That was the last public worship service we held. It's been a long time and continues to be a part of our everyday lives. It has involved a lot of suffering, lost jobs, lost lives, lost in-person contacts, lost health with sickness and depression, and the list goes on. Who do we turn to for help? The lessons for this morning give us that answer beginning in the Old Testament with the people of Israel still in captivity in Babylon. The prophet says, haven't you heard? Haven't you known? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He doesn't faint or grow weary. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What a verse of power, strength, and hope. So powerful that many posters and songs have been based upon it, including our own on eagle's wings, which we will sing at the end of the service. For the author of Isaiah 40, humans are like grasshoppers who can become soaring eagles through the intervention of God. That is who we turn to for help in our times of need. The story told of a little boy and his father. They were walking along the road when they came across a large stone. The boy looked at the stone and thought about it a little. Then he asked his father, Do you think if I use all my strength I can move that rock? Father thought for a moment and said, I think that if you use all your strength, you can do it. That was all the little boy needed. He ran over to the rock and began to push on it. He pushed and he pushed so hard did he try that little beads of sweat appeared on his forehead. But the rock didn't move. Not an inch. Not a an half an inch. After a while, the little boy sat down on the ground. His face had fallen. His whole body seemed to be just a lump there on the earth. 
You were wrong, he told his dad. I can't do it. His father walked over to him, knelt beside him, and put his arm around the boy's shoulder. You can do it, he said. You just didn't use all your strength. You didn't ask me to help. The world in which we live tells us that it is all up to us. It tells us that we have to be strong and independent. It tells us we can't and shouldn't count on anyone or anything else. And yet, what faith tells us and what Jews and Christians have known forever is that we have a ready resource in God, strength for those who ask. We need to ask God for the help we need. The psalmist for today wasn't afraid to ask because he knew what God was like. He said, the Lord is gracious. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. And God not only cares for humans, God cares for all creation. God covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills, and even the animals. The Lord gives to the animals their food, to the young ravens when they cry. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, those who ask for his help, those who hope in his steadfast love. That is who we turn to for help in our times of need. The gospel shows again the God who helps those who are down. Following last week's expulsion of the demon in Capernaum synagogue, Jesus now turns to healing Simon's mother-in-law in a local home. When her fever leaves her, she gets up and serves Jesus and the disciples. Her healing leads to her serving. The word here in Greek for serving is diakonia, the same root word for deacons and deaconesses. We lift up the many deaconesses who have served the church, the Lutheran church, through the years. They have served in many different settings, from church parishes to nursing homes to hospitals, to homeless shelters. We lift up the individuals who offer the prayers every day on our prayer chain, whose petitions to God help bring healing to many. We lift up the volunteers on our evangelism committee who send out cards of compassion to those who are sick, ill, or dying. Today we will install council members for this new year. They will serve God and all of us in many different ways, including bringing special healing. During the installation, we will remind them, you are to be faithful in your specific area of serving that the Spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. That's bringing healing, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding. Our healing by God leads to our serving of others. The Amish have a theme using the word joy, J-O-Y. J, Jesus first. O, others second. Y, yourself last. In serving, we, need, we too need strength, as Jesus did when he went off by himself to pray. Following his healing of Simon's mother-in-law, the whole city of Capernaum gathered around the house with their sick and infirm to be healed by Jesus. It must have been a super long day. Early that next morning, Jesus went out in the dark to pray for strength from his heavenly Father. We take time to get closer to God, especially in prayer and meditation. It's the battery recharge that keeps us going. A second story about a father and his son. 
A father took his small son with him to town one day to run some errands. When lunchtime arrived, the two of them went to a familiar diner for a sandwich. The father sat down on one of the stools at the counter and lifted the boy up to the seat beside him. They ordered lunch, and when the waiter brought the food, the father said, Son, we'll just have to say a silent prayer. Dad got through praying first and waited for the boy to finish his prayer. But he just sat with his head bowed for an unusually long time. When he finally looked up, his father asked him, What in the world were you praying about all that time? With the innocence and honesty of a child, he replied, How do I know? It was a silent prayer. <laughs> Prayer and asking God for help will get us through the times in which we live, where we will be able to serve others like Christ before us. One final story, a few more stories than usual today. Henry Nowen in his book, The Roots of Hope said, recently a friend told me a story that expressed the meaning of compassion better than any explanation I had heard before. Once there was a very old man who used to meditate early every morning under a large tree on the bank of the Ganges River in India. One morning, having finished his meditation, the old man opened his eyes and saw a scorpion floating helplessly in the strong current of the river. As the scorpion was pulled close to the tree, it got caught in the long tree roots that branched out far into the river. The scorpion struggled frantically to free itself, but got more and more entangled in the complex network of the tree roots. When the old man saw this, he immediately stretched himself onto the extended roots and reached out to rescue the drowning scorpion. But as soon as he touched it, the animal jerked and stung him wildly. Instinctively, the man withdrew his hand, but then, after having regained his balance, he once again stretched himself out along the roots to save the agonized scorpion. But every time the old man came within reach, the scorpion stung him so badly with its poisonous tail that his hands became swollen and bloody and his face distorted by pain. At that moment, a passerby saw the old man stretched out on the roots, struggling with the scorpion and shouted, Hey, silly old man, what's wrong with you? Only a fool risks his life for the sake of an ugly, useless creature. Don't you know that you may kill yourself to save that ungrateful animal? Slowly the old man turned his head, and looking calmly in the stranger's eyes, he said, Friend, because it is the nature of the scorpion to sting, why should I give up my own nature to save? Now in comments. Well, that's the question. Why should we give up our nature to be compassionate, even when we get stung in a biting, stinging world? The story about the old man and the scorpion holds out a great challenge to a society in which we are made to believe that mutual struggle dominates the process of human development. It challenges us to show that to embrace is more human than to reject. That to kiss is more human than to bite. To behold, more human than to stare. To be friends, more human than to be rivals. To make peace, more human than to make war. In short, that compassion is more human than strife. The one on whom we ask for help is the God who created the earth, who calls out the stars, whose strength knows no limits, and who gives that strength to the faint and the powerless, giving those who wait for God the power to fly. We rise to sing our hymn of the day. It's not quite yet on eagle's wings, but it is one related to the message.
the council members that are here today to please come forward at this time. We'll gather across the front. And then I put those glasses on, everything goes forward. <laughs> Go ahead and gather across here and we'll introduce you. There's, looks like there's three of them here today. We have Zane Junker, Angelo Renato, and Ali Hyles. I believe we have 10 this year, so either all seven are going to show up to the next one. I know Norm's not coming to worship at all with the virus, but uh, go ahead and turn and face me, and uh, we'll go forward. The following people have been elected by the council or by the congregation to positions of leadership. We give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. A reading from 1 Corinthians. There are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activity. It is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. You three have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God, who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all the members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support, so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful in your specific area of serving, that the Spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will. Go ahead and face the congregation. People of God, I ask you, Will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, answer, we will, and we ask God to help us. We will. I now declare you three installed as officers, council members of this congregation. Almighty God bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace, that you may be faithful servants of Christ. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. We continue with, uh, well, I'm just going to mention the offerings of the church. You put those at the door. I want to thank you for those offerings and remind those at home that are listening in. You're welcome to send your donations too. I thought it would be good to have a prayer of uh, thanksgiving. God of all creation, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Continue with the prayers of the church. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church, for ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospital, hospice, and military chaplains, for those serving in prison ministry, for all who proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ, let us pray. <laughs> for creation, for insects in the grass, clouds on the mountaintops, for cattle in the rainwater they drink, for the humility to take our place among all creatures of the earth. Let us pray. Yes. 
for the nations, for all who lead in cities and towns, states and countries, for community organizers, school officials, and CEOs, for international health organizations that in times of trial, fear, or hopelessness, they find freedom and service to those most in need. Let us pray. For all wearied by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking supportive relationships, for those crushed by debt, for those struggling with chronic pain or other sickness, for those exhausted from overwork or stress, and for all who cry out to you, especially Judy Keith, Blanca Overa, Judy Peterson, John Breddy. Let us pray. And mercy, for this congregation, for outreach and social ministries centered here, especially peacemakers in the food pantry, also the AA groups and Narcotics Anonymous, for parish nurses and visitors, for ministries of companionship and support, for the young people in this place who open us to new understandings, let us pray. <laughs> for our newly elected council, we pray for guidance and wisdom and an openness to your spirit as they meet this coming Friday night and Saturday morning. We pray that you would not only bless their time of understanding, but also bless their fellowship together, as some may not know others as well. We give you thanks that once again, people offer to serve in this way. You're blessed with so many volunteers in the congregation. We thank you for all of them. Let us pray. Amen. Thanksgiving for the faithful departed who were called by name and now rest from their labors, that their lives serve as witnesses to the goodness of God. Let us pray. Amen. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We continue with Holy Communion. Go ahead and get your cups ready at this time. I don't know if any of you happened to watch the uh, tape of last Sunday's second service with the kids in their first communion. Uh, I told everybody to get their cups ready, but I would commune the three kids first. And uh, I did that, and then I forgot to encourage the others to take communion. <laughs> and at the end of the service, we got the announcement, I think it was Marge Farmer that held up her cup, and she said, what about us? <laughs> so we had communion at the end. So don't let me forget to have you take communion when we get to that place. And guess what I did? I forgot the, the chalice and cup. So I will do that um, as it is. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Jesus shed for you. We pray together the post communion prayer. Christ Jesus. At this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet nourished in body and in spirit to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen.
Now may God, the Creator, strengthen you, Jesus, the Beloved, fill you, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen. Short time for announcements. That's got to be a first that I didn't have communion out on the altar when we came to communion. So I worry about my memory without question. Um, the dollhouse we've talked about is now in the back with a sheet next to it. If you would like to participate in the silent auction that will go towards our worship music program, there's a sign-up sheet on the right side of the dollhouse. And it's, that's for your name and whatever bid you would decide to offer for that. And uh, we'll have that out for maybe three weeks, at least three Sundays. So I encourage some of you to, even if you don't want it yourself, if you know somebody that might uh, be good to give it to someone, that would be good as well. There is the hand sanitizer back there. So after you've used the pen, go ahead and use the sanitizer. Other announcements this morning that anyone has? Dave always encourages me to remind you that as we finish, that we will usher you out from the back first. But, uh, I know we're just creatures of habit. We want to stand up and leave right away. And even after months and months of doing it this way, our mind still doesn't always remember. Now, finally, we will sing on eagle's wings. We've been waiting for that one. Let us rise.